banana is ruining your smoothies. Supposedly, according to something that's been picking up speed on the internet, adding banana to smoothies makes it much less healthy because it destroys the antioxidants in there. Is this just an internet story or is it true? Is it fact or fad? This idea comes from a study where eight people were given a smoothie with and without banana. And then they measured the blood level of these compounds called flavin thiols. Flavin thiols are a type of polyphenols. They're a type of phytonutrient. They're found in different plant foods. They have antioxidant function. They're found in several fruits. They're found in tea. They're found in cocoa. And they've been consistently linked to health benefits, especially at the level of heart health and cognitive benefits as well. So the scientists took this group of people and tried to figure out which condition helped them get the most flavin thiols out of their smoothie. First, they gave them the polyphenols in a capsule. Just no smoothie, just a capsule that they popped in just as a control to see how much flavin thiol you can get in there. And the results looked like this. You can see the blood level of certain molecules, metabolites from those polyphenols rises in the blood in the hours after consuming the capsule. Then same amount of polyphenols, but this time in a berry smoothie. It's not that different. Goes up, comes back down after a few hours. And then here's the same amount of polyphenols in a banana smoothie. It barely budges, right? Barely goes up. It's 81% less flavin thiols in the blood of the participants after consuming the banana smoothie. So what's going on here? The idea is that the banana contains an enzyme that breaks down these compounds while you're drinking it and in your stomach. And so much less of it, almost nothing gets to your bloodstream. But I went through this study really carefully and it has a significant kink. So if we look at it closely, what they did, and they described this in the methods section of the study, the participants consumed the smoothie within one hour of the smoothie being prepared. So it wasn't blend and drink. And they actually show that the level of these polyphenol molecules in the smoothie decline pretty fast. After 10 minutes, after blending, just sitting on a bench, it's already down 50%. So maybe it's less the fact that it contains banana and it's more the waiting, the sitting there before drinking. So they tested this. They gave them the banana smoothie after different periods of waiting. Here's the banana smoothie after 40 to 60 minutes, sitting somewhere, and the blood levels barely change. Here's 30 to 40 minutes after preparation, pretty similar. Now here's 10 minutes or less, a huge difference, right? A lot more of these compounds get to the blood. So the bulk of this effect is because the smoothies are left sitting somewhere before consuming. Now this level, the higher level after 10 minutes or less is obviously much higher, but it's still not the same as what they were getting out of the berry smoothie, for example. So the banana is still doing something even short term, but that effect is then maximized over time. So next they ran the tightest test that they could run. This was actually a really cool paper in terms of all the experiments that they did. They gave people the banana drink, so like a banana smoothie, just a banana, and the polyphenol in a smoothie, but separate. So the banana and the polyphenol are not in contact, and then they consume them at the same time. Just sip one, sip the other, alternately until they get to the end. Right? Really interesting, really cool experiment, and the results look like this. So top line is just the smoothie with the polyphenols, no banana. And then the bottom line is consuming both at the same time, polyphenols and banana. So you see that there's still a difference between the two lines, nothing to do with that 80% reduction that we saw previously. It's more like 30, 37% is the number they give for these two curves, the difference. So this is saying that that enzyme in the banana is still breaking down the polyphenols while you're consuming it down the tubes, right, in your stomach, um, but much less than if you let it sit on a bench. So this is the closest experiment to blending the smoothie and consuming right away. It would probably look closest to this than the 80% reduction. Now, it's good to point out that we're looking at levels of these polyphenols and their metabolites in the blood. We're not looking at any actual health effects. So it's still a question mark what actual difference, if any, uh, this makes in somebody long term. Does it matter if you're getting 37% less of these polyphenols in the blood over years with everything else in your diet. I don't know. Um, but anyway, this is the result. So verdict on this one. Banana destroys your smoothies, breaks down the antioxidants in there. Fad or fact? There's some fact to it. It's not completely made up. 
So we'll go fact on this one. Although the magnitude of the effect that's being circulated out there, that 80% almost seems like it's pointless to drink the smoothie at that point. Most of that is coming from the weight, not the banana itself being in the smoothie. So that could be avoided. And my guess is for most people it is avoided. I at least, if I make a smoothie, I drink it right after blending. But let me know in the comments if you do it differently, if you save it in the fridge or something like that. This effect is the type of thing where if it's all the same, if I have berries and banana, sure, I'll add the berries instead. Why not? But if somebody else made the smoothie and it's got a banana in there, or if I like adding banana, I'll just drink the smoothie with a banana. I'm not going to lose sleep over this. If you're drinking smoothies with fruit and vegetables and you're worried about the type of fruit that goes in there because it might decrease the amount of polyphenol, congratulations on your first world problems. You're doing really well in general. What other ideas should we tackle in Factor Fad? Let me know in the comments. Here's three simple tips to put together a healthy diet. And this video goes over the top 10 vegetables for diabetics. Check them out. I'll see you in there. Bye-bye.